In this video, we will be discussing the use of pinned retained track frustrations as part of a tooth preparation for a crown. Four different situations will be presented. In the first situation, one cuspid was lost. Three cuspids are remaining and 2 mm of vertical tooth structure is present between the tooth defect and the gingival margin. To restore this tooth, a pin could be placed to assist the retention of the core. In this situation, it is easier to fabricate a full contour direct restoration before proceeding with tooth preparation for the crown. As you can see, plenty of walls are remaining. These walls will provide most of the retention for a crown. The pin will help providing retention, but it is not absolutely required for the success of this treatment. In this situation, when natural forces will occur on the crown, the remaining cuspid and the actual wall remaining around the defect will resist the torquing forces and thus help avoiding cusp fracture on the opposing side. The prognosis for that tooth is excellent. The second situation is similar to the first case. The only difference being that the floor of the defect is at the level of the gingiva. No vertical walls are remaining. In this situation, following tooth preparation, we can see that enough retention can be obtained from the remaining walls. The pin would certainly help, but with less magnitude than the actual walls around the remaining cuspids. Once the core is built and the tooth is restored with a crown, the cusp remaining on the defect side will help resisting torquing forces and thus help avoiding fracture of the cuspid on the opposing side. In the next situation, two cuspids were lost, but two millimeter or more of vertical walls are remaining around the defect. To restore that tooth, two pins could be placed before proceeding with the fabrication of a core. Once the tooth is prepared for a crown, it is noticeable that the retention is only obtained from the walls around the remaining cusps. The pins will be important to the success of that tooth by providing additional retention. Once the core is built and the tooth is restored with a crown, the vertical walls of dentin remaining on the side of the defect will help resisting torquing forces and thus help avoiding fracture of the opposing cusps. The risks are higher than for both previous situations. If three cuspids or more are missing, the remaining cuspid would get too much stresses and will likely fracture. A preprosthetic endodontic therapy is indicated so that a post and a core could be placed to assist the crown. In the last situation, two cuspids were lost and no remaining vertical walls are present on the side of the defect. In this situation, if the tooth was prepared for a crown using pins to retain a core, the retention would be obtained from both the remaining walls and the pins. The pins would be very important in the retention of this restoration. Once the tooth would be restored with a crown, as can be seen on this image, the pins will be the main feature resisting torquing forces. They will likely break. Once this happens, the remaining cuspid will be overloaded and could easily fracture. In a situation like this one, pins are therefore not indicated. A preprosthetic endodontic treatment should take place to allow the use of a post and core, which will improve the prognosis and decrease the risks of fracturing the remaining cuspids. I hope that this video answered all of the questions that you had in regards to using pin retained restorations to assist crowns. Thank you for watching.